Hey guys, this is the Unveil Podcast with DJ Wavy. Yo, yo, this is DJ Wavy. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to yet another episode of the Unveil Podcast with your boy, DJ Wavy, of course. And today we're going to be talking with an educator. Her name is Miss Clara George. And our focus is how educators can be more creative in the classroom especially during uh, this pandemic now miss george is a passionate educator by profession and is currently serving as the principal of the saint martin seventh day adventist school she is also a media coach motivational speaker and an individual trained in integrating technology in the classroom miss george welcome to the show Thank you so much for having me and hello everyone. All right. So usually how we do things here, um, we discuss a little bit of news. So we're going to talk about what's going on in St. Martin and then we're going to answer some questions from the question box. And those questions are coming from our fans. Then we're going to de- go, go into the interview. All right. So, okay, sounds good. so this week um, I saw this thing about, say martin being given the green light for carnival and it says here the council of ministers has given say martin carnival development foundation the scdf the green light to proceed with the planning and execution of carnival 2021 what are your thoughts about that Personally, I think it's crazy, but I guess they're looking at the finances and and so forth. So it is what it is. We just see how it how it goes. I mean, I, I could agree with that. I don't think that any country is in the position right now to successfully hold a carnival that will exactly. increase the numbers drastically. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's that's next to impossible. Right. <laughs> and yeah, they do have plans. Yeah, they said to maintain social distancing and and so forth. But yeah, just realistically speaking, I don't see how that's going to happen. They did make some um, changes, such as I understood there will be no juve. But again, we really have to see how that's going to play out because I don't see it happening. <laughs> uh, they might as well just call this like a a, a parade or something because I don't know what's carnival without a juve man. I don't think the St. Martin people are going to appreciate that very much. <laughs> but that's what's going on. I guess um, some, some person is just happy just to have something, I guess. So. Well, yeah. I mean, I think I think a lot of a, a lot of the Caribbean islands would be ecstatic to to hear news like this. Um Trinidad being number yeah. 1 on the list, of course. And honestly, I don't think people would care if the government say well, we're not going to have Juve and this and that. I mean, from they hear Carnival, you know, it's road already. So they really can. I don't know. I don't know how they plan to control the crowd. I don't know how they plan to control the events. Good luck to you guys with that. <laughs> All right. So right now we're going to look <laughs> right now. We're going to look at the question box. And like I said, these questions are coming in from the fans. So. Uh, we're going to answer them together. The first question says, whoa, first question, should the Caribbean islands put off carnival again? Well, I mean, we just talked about this. Like I said, <laughs> I think I think it's for the best. Um, I understand that a lot yes, of. Certainly. Yeah, I, I understand that carnival, you know, is one of those things that brings a lot of money for for these different Caribbean islands and so on. But. Honestly, I don't know if Caribbean people have the discipline to follow the rules that they will put in place. What do you think? Exactly. Yeah. And, and not just that, even the health system too, like on St. Martin, we have a medical center, mm-hmm. you know, and even presently, sometimes our concerns are with the number of beds available and so forth. So to do something like this, really, I, I don't see how that's going to play out. But for the Caribbean on the whole, I really think our focus should be on trying to bring the number down and trying to save lives so having carnival and again my answer might be biased being a christian <laughs> but i really don't see it as something being essential 
So I would definitely say no to that yeah. question. <laughs> well, that's definitely true. That's definitely true. Moving on to question number two. Uh, this one says, which Caribbean country is the most hospitable? What do you think about that? Which Caribbean country? Mm. Don't be biased and call yours, though. <laughs> I would have to be biased again as they say, Martin, do you know that we're known as the friendly island? Did you know that? Who who know that? Every just everybody on St. Martin? Because I never hear that in my life. Everybody, <laughs> it's just it's just known. It's just known. <laughs> I don't know about that. It's just generally known. Like we're known as the friendly island. Like I kid you not. So mm. yeah. Well, okay. Um I knew I know a couple people from St. <laughs> Martin and you know, if I if I'm to if I'm to Are make a friendly? decision based on those persons, I would say you guys have a chance of being, you know, one of the nicest. Um I honestly can't right. think of one. To me, most Caribbean to me most Caribbean today? To me most Caribbean um you know, countries they they only nice to tourists. <laughs> so I don't even, I, I can't give an answer uh. to that. I can't give an answer to that. <laughs> so I'm going to have so to plead the fifth on that. Or none. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to have to plead the fifth on that one. Question number three. If you were a teacher, <laughs> what subject would you want to teach? Now, let me hear what you have to say. Hmm. If you were a teacher, Miss well, Educator. I am a teacher. <laughs> but if I had to select just one subject to teach, I think it would be art. Art? Why is art that? Teaching. I love art. I don't know. It allows, there's not much pressure on the teacher, I would say, but it also allows students to express themselves in a way that we tend to overlook a whole lot. It's yeah. um, like free, it's like therapeutic in a way. And so definitely, I think it's one of the least stressful subjects to teach. All right, well, that, I could agree on that. Um, I would want to teach something like graphical communications or technical drawing because mm. I like, I love to draw as well, but you know, one of my one of my dreams was always to be an architect. So I wouldn't mind teaching something, nice. you know, something like that. Uh, we have the final question here in the question box. What accent do you have? I think this question is for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, people, let me tell y'all something. Not because we allow y'all to ask us questions, mean y'all can ask me anything y'all feel like. Okay. Have some respect when you answer these questions. Now, as a man from the Caribbean, I would just have to say that I have a collection of tongues, you know. I don't mm -hmm. necessarily have one accent. It's so mixed up. Mm -hmm. I'm a Guyanese, mm -hmm. grew up in the Bahamas, now living in Jamaica. You know, I've been to different Caribbean islands. It's all messed up, man. And to be, <laughs> and to be honest, I think uh -huh. that we're going to see a lot more messed up accents in oh, quotes yeah. here in the Caribbean because people are migrating. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Even with me, it's funny because I thought that question was directed to me. I get it. I get asked that question so many times. Oh, you times get asked? Well, let me really ask you the question. What accent I have? <laughs> so what accent do you have? Do you know? I have no idea. It's definitely not the St. Martin accent. But I have a St. Martin accent. And then if I'm in, like, I study in Trinidad, so... My friends oh. on Simmer can tell me that I have a Trinidadian accent. Then if I go to Dominica, that's where my parents are from, they mm -hmm. would tell me I have a Dominican accent. So I really, I just, I don't know. Wow. <laughs> I, well, I, I guess you could say that you have a collection of tongues as well. There you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> a collection of tongues. All right. That's it for the question box. Remember, guys, continue to send your questions. We really enjoy answering them. So, Miss George, let's get into the interview now <clears throat> you're from the island of saint martin for anyone who might not know tell us about saint martin and tell us a bit about the school that you lead that i lead as well all right no problem with saint martin is a beautiful beautiful caribbean island but what is unique about it is it's the smallest landmass that's actually divided into two nations so we have the dutch side and we have the french side 
and it's um, only 37 square miles, but it is beautiful. I used to say that it's more advanced, but now visiting other Caribbean islands, I would have to, you know, just say that we're like everyone else in that regard. Um, English, we generally speak English, but of course, Dutch is the official language on the Dutch side and French being that on the French side. But when you're here, it's like a melting pot. So you're going to hear Papimento, Italian, you're going to hear Hindi, Chinese. And on the French side, there's a lot of Creole Patois. Yeah as well. So yeah, in a nutshell, that's St. Martin. Our main economy is tourism. So we have, we definitely do cater to tourists, lots of fun activities. If you have not visited St. Martin, please put it on your bucket list, make it happen. You sound, you sound like a, a St. Martinese ambassador. That's what they call you guys, St. Martinese, St. Martinites. You sound like an ambassador, man. You sound like he's selling the country on the country's behalf. <laughs> 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 oh man i do love my country i do love my country that's good stuff so tell us a little bit about the school that, uh, that you're in charge of okay so the school i work at is actually my primary school primary school i attended so it's a privilege and an honor it is the only seven day advent to school on saint martin it is on the dutch side of the island and um Right now, we have a student population of about 350 and a staff within the 50s. Let's see, what else can I tell you about my school? It is a faith-based school, so we definitely get the opportunity to integrate our beliefs yeah. in um, the educational system. But we are a loving family. We love each other dearly, and we are growing. So that's yeah. a nutshell about the school that I work at. Uh, that's pretty good. It's that's pretty good. School. Okay, elementary. <laughs> Three hundred and fifty students, not bad, not bad. Um yes. one of the one of the things <laughs> one of the things we the internationals here always make fun about with the St. Martin students is the fact that the country is so small, you know. We always say, Hey, you yes. must know this person because it's only so far that you guys live apart from each other. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I used to actually tease my Beckway friends about that because they're even smaller than we are. Yeah, but wow, yeah, <laughs> that that's is interesting. But no, we don't know everybody, and everybody doesn't know us. Yeah, yeah. So you say that's what they all say, but I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving on. So tell me a little bit about why you mm -hmm. became uh, a teacher. Do you have any specific influencers? Well, um, let's see. From since I could ever remember, I always wanted to be a teacher. I remember when I was in the second grade and my teacher asked all of us in the class to choose our top three future professions. My first one, I wanted to be a ballerina teacher. The second option I wrote down, I wanted to be a classroom teacher. And then the third was to be a ballerina or no, it was the first was to be a ballerina and that in Be a teacher, but um, every time I would go home, I would teach my mom's perfume bottles, I would <laughs> teach chubby bottles. <laughs> wow, <laughs> anything I got my hands on, I was teaching. So, I've always loved teaching, even at church. I would be either involved in some sort of children's ministry, or before I went off to further my studies, I actually volunteered at the very same school that I'm currently working at um, mm -hmm. to be close to children just for the opportunity to teach. So, I've always loved teaching. In terms of any influencers, I wouldn't say I have one in particular. Look like we having some. Sorry, the 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 call just dropped. Repeat. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Yeah, the the internet just dropped. You could repeat. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Is it on my end or your end? It was my end. It was. You could. End. Yeah, you could go ahead. You were talking about in, your influencer. Yes, yeah, so I was just sharing that it isn't one person in particular, but all the amazing teachers that I were, you know, I was blessed with over the years, I would say influenced my decision to be a teacher today. 
Yeah, I could definitely agree with that. Um, you know, some of my teachers were the reason that I wanted to do architecture. I had this really okay. I had this really great teacher in he taught me in junior high and in senior high school. Mm. Um, and I think he was an excellent teacher, you know. So nice. yeah, I could definitely agree with that. Um we have we have quite a few excellent excellent teachers here in the caribbean so yes that's true so a question here for the fans you know who like to ask me strange questions in the question <laughs> box <laughs> what is the weirdest thing that ever happened to you in the classroom weirdest thing hmm what would be the weirdest thing that's a good question i can't really think about anything weird i mean recently because i also lecture adults in the evening and I could remember starting up the class I had a icebreaker where we just uh, had all the students kind of ask questions in the class <clears throat> it was not even numbers so <laughs> that was a little strange but I wouldn't say I really had any no, I can't think of any to be honest Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we're going to have those issues out here in the Caribbean, you know. Um people in the classroom usually respectable, so you know, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe if you were teaching in like yeah. the states or something, I I'm sure you would have had a couple stories. <laughs> ah. Yeah, but I didn't have the I didn't have any so far. Yeah. All right. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. Lucky you. <laughs> so so when you became a principal, um, I read that you became the youngest <laughs> principal on your island. What was that like? Hmm. <laughs> well, it was a bit intimidating at first, to be quite honest. And I always thought to learn. I always wanted to learn from others to influence positive that it was going to be a challenge no doubt I was working at the school with teachers who actually taught me when I attended the very same school so you could just yeah. imagine yeah boy <laughs> I tell you that can't be but um I also knew that it was God's purpose for me and so with that I went forward with a positive mindset mm -hmm. and um, I knew that it was just a lifetime of learning experiences to gain so with that it it, it just I just went in hey that's that's the best mindset to go with yeah. um, I could definitely understand you know imagine a teacher working at that school for 20 20 20 plus years and a student that they taught came in and you know but Mm -hmm. That's just how it goes. Like you said, you really yeah. believe that it was where God wanted you to be. And you wouldn't be there if that wasn't, you know, exactly. if he didn't want you to be there. So congrats to you on that. So the, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, man, no problem. So the pandemic um, has positioned us in a very strange period. Uh, how difficult, how difficult um, was it at the beginning you know, to manage what was going on and how smooth was the transition for you? Hmm. I guess like every other school, it was a whole lot to take in at one yeah, point. Boy. Um, starting off, I can remember when we had to switch. I had my teachers. I must say I have a group of amazing teachers. They just got the ball rolling. We had to switch. And I remember I did a lot of research in that short space of time and I came across um, a website whereby it was free and easy for both the teachers and the students as well as the parents to gain access to information and so we use that platform to just get things rolling and I must I must say that it wasn't as bad as I thought it would have been it is still a challenge even today but mm -hmm. we are working together as a team and before then because one of our major concerns at that time was the high percentage of students who had either no access to internet or yeah. had no device at home, right? And so God blessed us because there was a foundation, the 4C Foundation, even before there was COVID, they 
were going to donate to us 50 iPads. And so it came in at the perfect, perfect, perfect time. time. So we were able to, wow. you know, give out those 50 iPads. And then the ministry also, but that was more recently, gave us a few devices. And the school board also made some financial investments to ensure that we were able to carry out this remote learning. But it was a challenge. It still is a challenge, but I am really pleased with how things are going. Yeah, well, that's pretty good. Congrats to you. I've heard I've heard very different uh, reports from other <laughs> from other lecturers, you know, from other schools and so on. Um, what do you think about the students? How do you think their adjustment was? Honestly, I think they are adjusting as best as they can, although it might not seem sufficient to us as adults, um, especially when it comes to their participation in class. Um, they are more distracted. They, we have a lot of reports of children rather than actually being online. They are playing games. They are um, so you're seeing them online, but they're, they're just not there. You know, their focus is just not there. And even when, because right now we have a blended learning approach. And so when they're at school, we have also noticed that they're not as responsive. So they're very quiet. And of course, every school will love a quiet school, but not when it is too quiet. Not too when quiet. your students yeah. are no longer asking as much questions or not responding. So that's has, that has been a bit of a frustration. But I would say that they are children, that it, it it's it's been new for all of us and so it's going we have to just be a bit more patient with them so i think they're trying the best that they can <laughs> yeah man i think i think i think you know we are trying we're trying um i could remember when this pandemic just came around i was still in university feels so good that i could say that i was still in university <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I was still in university and the workload felt five times, you know, 10 times more. Um, uh, I wonder why that is. Are you, are you, is your school one of those schools that pressured the students? Yeah, because we, we got some complaints such as those from parents. It felt that the workload was a lot more, especially for our pre, pre exam and exam classes, because we're trying such a sub such approach like subject teaching like you have in a high school we yeah. do that with our pre-exam and exam classes so you have assignments coming in not by one teacher but sometimes up to five teachers giving you assignments so it would seem a bit more heavier yeah. and what we are noting noticing also is that the students are not completing their assignments so it's just it's it's been hard it still is hard the teachers are trying different creative approaches, um, such as we also have class dojo, they'll get points in class dojo, sort of to encourage them. Or when they come into school, we try to big them up, you know, just to encourage them to actually get their work done. But definitely that complaint has come in where parents and students find that the workload has increased, but we have been to increase the workload. I think y'all increased the workload, to be honest. So I, I don't care what they tell me, and especially <laughs> here. I know they increased our workload. As a matter of fact, they're trying to kill us all here, man. I feel sorry for some of them. Yeah, and something else you have to take into consideration is that you still have the curriculum that you're trying to complete for the year, and you've lost a lot of instructional time. Yeah. So, uh, and even with us, we still have the foundation-based exams coming up as for our exam students, and you're not tweaking it or taking away from it. So they're still expecting you to carry out this curriculum. So I can see how it's, there's some pressure on the part of the students, teachers as well. So yeah. Yeah, man, I, well, that's true, that's true. Can't knock it, you know. So <laughs> so in 2017, um, you graduated with a degree in technology in the classroom, right? Um, honestly, yes. I don't think that I think that that time in doing that degree was perfect. Did you, did you, did you, were you a part of the planning for this COVID-19 pandemic? It sounds like, <laughs> because I don't know how your timing was so good. <laughs> I don't know your time. That was a good call. Um, so since, since you got this degree, how, how have you gone about integrating technology in the classroom and, and, you know, getting your teachers at your school to do it? Okay, well, fortunately for me, I work with a group of tech savvy teachers themselves who do not always wait on me for directives in terms of um, integrating technology. However, 
yes, with the background in the field, I was able to, you know, play a big role in ensuring that it is done, that it is done yeah. effectively. And just to be of a support, especially to my teachers who may not be as tech savvy. Um, it also it also came in very handy because I was able to network with other persons who I may have studied with at the time. Mm -hmm. And so having input from other principals at their school, what is working, what isn't working, really benefited, I would say, my school on a whole. But my teachers have no problem when it comes to integrating technology at all. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, you sound like you're in the perfect unit, perfect position right now. Uh, so I, <laughs> some teachers don't even know how to start the, the Zoom easy. call. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, they do try. You're working really hard, so I'm impressed. Yeah, that's pretty good. So, what kind of tips could you give to other teachers around the Caribbean? You know, who want to be a bit more creative using technology. Well, some tips I would give definitely is to stay current. Um, what we have done as a school is to ensure that our teachers receive training. Um, although they may not have felt the need for it, we allow them to um, undergo more training because learning can never be exhausted. So stay current. There are lots of workshops now more than ever before yeah. on how to integrate technology. So get on board. Another tip is to be patient with yourself. Um, I found myself getting a bit frustrated. I had teachers, although we felt like things were moving in the direction we wanted it to go, we felt it could have gone faster or better. But we had to practice just being patient with yourself. Accept that you're trying your best and that is enough. Um, the center had been pressuring us people. Uh, we'll be right back after this quick message. Yeah, guys, so we're here talking with Miss Clara George. Um, she's an educator in the Caribbean. She is from the island of St. Martin. Uh, we're having a bit of technical difficulties right now. But like she's saying, you know, there are plenty of ways um, you teachers out there can uh, can improve in the classroom as it relates to technology. Number one on the list, she says, is being patient with yourself, you know, and just understanding that you are trying the best with what you have. Yeah. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yes, another tip I would give is to network with other educators. If it's one thing that I have learned being in this um, position is that you can always learn from, from others. You might have something that's working for you, Mm -hmm. and just networking with someone else and sharing will help benefit them. And at the same time, they may be able to share some tips of things that are working for them. So definitely during this time, network with other educators. Another tip is to gain feedback from key stakeholders like students and parents. A lot of the time, we don't really listen to our students, so definitely listen to them. You mentioned that you felt the workload was a bit heavy you know, as teachers, maybe listening to students a lot more can help us know how best to, you know, be flexible, more flexible with our approach. Yeah. And finally, continue to trust and depend on God. Yes, he has been that source of strength and he will continue to be that source of strength during, during this time. As always, as always. All right. Um, it was a pleasure having you. That was actually our last. <laughs> that was actually our last question. Can't believe the Wi-Fi decided to cut out at that time. But <laughs> it was a pleasure having you. Um, you know, thanks for sharing. It was a pleasure being here. Yeah, no problem, man. Uh, just before we go, though, I want you to give some advice to parents. You know, how can parents be? Um, creative with, with, with teaching their children because we know that a lot of this online schooling, um, the parents are much more involved now than before. Mm -hmm. So give us a, give the parents a little bit of advice on that. Than before, that's true. Some advice on how to be creative, you said? How to, how to, how to be creative with teaching their children at home. Oh, at home. Okay. Well, the very first step is to connect with your child's teacher. It doesn't make any sense. You're trying to teach something contrary to what is actually taking place at school. So connect with your child's teacher. And if it's one thing that I've found works well is when parents take the very same curriculum and go a step further with it at home. So let's say if they're looking at 
the stars in the sky. You can even go further and teach your children about different planets that are also in the sky. So that's one tip. Um, another tip is do not um, underestimate the power of the internet. Yeah. If you do not feel confident in any topic that you're trying to review with your child, please go and research it. There is <laughs> so much information available to you online. So definitely make good use of it. And um, also, I would say to just remain, be there, be involved, be there. Children put the effort when they know that their parents are interested, not just in the grades that come home, but interested in how they're doing emotionally, interested in how they themselves can be a good source of help. So connect with your children and be present. So those, I would say, are some tips to give. Well, folks, there you have it, straight from the mouth of the educator, uh, media practitioner, coach, and motivational speaker. <laughs> Once again, I just want to say thank you, Miss George, for joining us. Um, thanks for giving awesome. tips. I'm sure that the teachers around the Caribbean really appreciate it, and the students as well. And of course, we can't forget the parents. Remember, guys, to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, if you know any Caribbean teachers, you know that would would be interested in getting this information just share the broadcast with them share it with your family and friends uh make sure you tune in next week we're gonna have another exciting episode for you guys oh send your questions to me on instagram at tim's underscore brush or you could send them to the unveil caribbean page and until next time guys see y'all later all right miss george <laughs> all right see you bye all right later Hey guys, if you liked that episode, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe, and also turn on the notification bell to stay updated.